All right, hello everyone once again. Uh, <clears throat> it's good to be back. Um, haven't posted anything in the last couple months. I apologize for that. I've been having some uh, major issues with my computer. Um, I haven't been able to get the program to convert the files over so that I could put them on YouTube. I've been having problems with actually a lot of programs. Um, and I'm hoping today uh, that we finally have that fixed. I actually built this computer I'm using probably about a, a year and a half ago. And since then, I've been having problems with um, di different programs and games running for a while and then conking out, just uh, throwing random errors and freezing up, things like that. So today what I did, well actually I did it yesterday, I just haven't had a chance to, to test this till today. Um, I did a BIOS update. Haven't done it since I put the system together. Long overdue. And since I've done that yesterday, a lot of my programs seem to be running fine again. So I'm hoping that that was the issue. And I'm hoping that uh, that takes care of this issue that I've been having. So today I'm just going to throw a, a little quick program together just uh, basically to test this out to see if this was the issue. So what I do is I have a, a lovely young lady that um, was kind enough to work with me here a few months ago. We took some pictures at an old covered bridge <clears throat> in the area around where I live. And uh, we just went out and we had some fun. Um, did a did a little bit of shoot. Now I was firing um, off-camera flash in here as you can probably see uh, the lighting coming off to the one side. <coughs> um, and I know this isn't a photography <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> um, but just giving you an idea of my setup. I was just firing uh, action umbrella off-camera flash um, with just one light. Uh, and we were just playing around having some fun. I was using my light meter I uh, had gotten a new light meter not too long ago and I was playing around with uh, my Sekonic, uh light meter that I had. So um, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm just going to do a little editing, just show you how I basically do my editing. It's just going to be really quick. Um, obviously she's a beautiful young lady, she doesn't need a whole lot of editing done to her. But uh, we're going to go ahead and um, just do a, a few little um, things that I normally do on my photographs. And, you know, maybe you can pick up one or two little tips. Um, like I said, I, I don't know everything. Not even close. I'm learning like everybody else is. It's, I mean, if you want to be good, it's, it's constantly, it's always learning, learning, learning. Um, and I'm not saying the way I do it's right. It's the way I do it. Okay, it's, it's good for me. It's comfortable for me. So, if you can pick something up, great. If not, um, or if you have a better way, you know, send me a comment. You know, I'm always looking forward to to seeing how other people do things. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this picture of this young lady. Um, once again, as I always say, we don't want to do any edits to the original uh, original layer. So we're going to hit Control J on the keyboard, which is going to create our layer that we're going to begin working with. Um, I'm just going to rename this uh, blemishes because what I want to do with this layer is um, I just want to clean up the skin a little bit if there's any blemishes. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer here and you can notice there's a few you know tiny little blemishes here and there on the on the skin. Nothing major, very beautiful skin. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over here I'm going to grab my spot healing brush tool um, J as, as you see J on the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and click that and I'm going to go ahead and enlarge my brush. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to touch up small areas that I think need a little bit of touching up. Kind of get them to blend in. And we got a spot right there. Um, like I said, there's, very, there's not a whole lot um, that needs to be touched up. Once again, I get that hand on here. As my previous videos, I show by depressing or holding down the space bar, which brings up the hand. Um, and then I can actually hold my left mouse button down. I can drag the photograph around wherever I want it. Okay. Um, so uh, once again, she doesn't have a lot of too many blemishes there that that um, needs any kind of work or fixing. Um, it looks pretty pretty nice. So I just took care of those two or three blemishes, um, and I think it looks really nice. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a copy of that layer. Now, the copy of this layer actually has the blemish blemish fixes on it. A lot of people can create separate layers if they'd want to do things independently. 
I do that sometimes. Sometimes I just, especially if I'm am kind of in a hurry, I just create a new copy of the layer with all the fixes I've already done to it. Um, I don't go back too often and make changes on my work. Um, if I think I'm going to, then I will, you know, put individual layers um, for my individual fixes, like an individual blemishes layer, maybe an individual teeth whitening layer, uh, an individual um, sharp sharpening layer, things things like that, uh, an individual burn, an individual dodge, um, things along that nature. Um, but like I said, today this is just a really quick tutorial just to show you a couple things that. I do sometimes to make the pictures look better. Um, I'm going to come over here to my um, to my dodge and burn tools. I'm going to go ahead and click. I want to get my dodge tool, which is right here. I'm going to grab my dodge tool, and maybe I'm just going to label this just very quickly dodge. And there's a many, many, many different ways you can dodge. Um, this is just a quick, down and dirty <laughs> way I do it. I just I just want to get the dodging done fast and. Uh, you know, a lot of times you have time restraints. You want to get these pictures out, um, and especially with this young lady, she she doesn't have a whole lot that needs done to her. So one of the things that I'll do a lot of times is I'll come in with my dodge. I'll make sure my exposure is where I want it up here. Um, I'm using 25%, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dodge along the the bottom of the lips there. Just going to give a little bit of extra highlight there, kind of like her lips uh, standing out a little bit. I'm going to actually lower the size of my brush and maybe just dodge up on her upper lip a little tiny bit. Alright, now if that if I don't like that, which I don't, I can just hit my uh control alt Z key and that and that'll take that off. And I can come in a little bit weaker on this one, maybe up top, maybe like only nine percent. Just a tiny bit. Now if you take a look at it before and after. I think that looks pretty good. It just makes her lips kind of stand out a little bit little bit more. Um, once again, it's personal preference. Some people like it, some people won't. It's totally up to you. Like I said, this is just going to be a very quick, down and dirty video. Um, I apologize, but I just, I just want to, I just want to see if my video is actually working again. So we're just going to go through this pretty quickly today. Um, if you have any questions or like to see anything in more detail, definitely leave me a comment. Um, on the video down below and uh, we'll see if we can get you something uh, a little more in depth. Um, if you can see, I'm looking at the eyes now. Now we're catching some beautiful highlights right here, or I'm sorry, beautiful catch lights in the eyes. This is from my umbrella um, and also we we're standing towards the end of the covered bridge so we have that light coming in. Okay, um, Which makes those eyes really sparkle, really stand out. There's really not a whole lot I need to do with these eyes. And you'll see I like to come in and out, in and out, and just to kind of get an overall look of the whole picture. Um, you know, back out so I can get a, a view of what the, the whole picture looks like overall. And then I like to kind of come in closer to see if, what, if anything, I can do maybe to enhance something uh, here or enhance something there. Um, and I think this looks, you know, the eyes look pretty good. Um, I could play around with the catch lights if I want. Uh, I could do this. I could do that. Um, but once again, being a fast video today, we're not going to really do that. Um, I don't even really need to dodge the eyes because her eyes are just you're beautiful the way they are, the way they um, they stand out. I really like them. So the only other thing that I would do with this picture right now that I can think of, she has some stray hairs here. Now, if you want, you can go in there and you can play around, create another layer over here. Um, Shift, Control, Alt, uh, E is how you create a layer. It just makes a copy of the previous layer. Once again, it's hold down the Shift, the Control, the Alt key, and the E key, which will create a copy of the layer below it. Um, I can come in here, and if I'd want, I could call this uh, Stray Hairs. That eh, helps if I spell it right. There we go. And if you really want to take the time and really get in depth with all these little hairs, uh, one of the easiest ways to do it, you can come back up here uh, to your spot healing brush. We can click on it. We can make it smaller. And if you notice, we're just going to hold down that left mouse button or a pen, whatever you're using, and just follow along. And that's going to actually get rid of those 
those strays. Now you're going to have to go ahead and you're going to have to follow along with each and every one. So this can be get a little more time consuming. Okay. And it's just a process of where you just take your time and you start going along and deleting these stray hairs out one by one. Oh, there I missed a tiny bit right there. So we'll go back over that. Um, and as you can see, it does uh, it does a fairly really nice well does a really nice job um, really starting to remove the stray hairs. Oop, I'm kind of shaky today, so I'm a little bit here, I'm a little bit there, I'm a little bit everywhere on the screen. But <clears throat> as you can see, it's it's uh, doing a nice job on um, removing these hairs one by one. There's a, I'm sure there are a bunch of other ways to do this. Um, but this is generally the way I do it. Um, like I said, it can be time consuming. But, you know, do it, you know, if you take your time and you do it up nicely, like I said, it can make a huge difference uh, in the photograph. You know, some of these you're going to have to come back and maybe touch a little bit here, touch a little bit there, because they're still leaving some, some uh, remnants of it. But like I said, I'm just doing this very quickly. Um, obviously, if this was um, a paid uh, a paid shot, um, I would you know definitely spend a lot more time fixing these hairs up. But I'm just going over it really quick, just kind of showing you what you can do, um, some of the things that you can accomplish um, to get rid of some of these hairs. So if I t if the before and the after, you see how that makes a big difference? Just very quickly. Um, using your healing brush over here, <coughs> your spot healing tool, uh, brush tool. Oh, there's one more. I'm going to grab this one here real quick. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I had that off. Okay, so that looks pretty, pretty nice. So I would do that and go through the hairs and and, and do that. Um, and that's a good tool if you have hair coming down like here across the face. I can grab that tool right over the skin, and I could just bam go right on up, and it gets rid of that hair. So we'll bring it back and get rid of it. See how? And the nice thing about this is it, it takes it takes the pixels um, from the area around the hair, and it basically emulates it, and it fills in where the hair was with that with those pixels. So it really does a good job of blending in where the hair was and what was under it. <coughs> Sometimes it can be a little bit more trickier than uh, than other times, but you know you just have to work with it, play with it. Um, and you'll start to get an idea of what you can do and what you can't do too easily with it. And where I find that I can't do good things with it, like if it gets into a pretty complicated area, then I might jump over to my cloning tool, like over here, to my uh, clone tool, clo clone stamp tool, and I'll start playing with with that stuff. But uh, other than that, you know, it does a, it does a does a fairly nice job of <coughs> getting rid of stray hairs. The only other thing that I could say on this photograph that I'd maybe want to do is I'm going to hit uh, Shift Control Alt E to create a uh, copy of all my layers now, and I'm going to rename this Sharpen, and I'm just going to do a real quick sharpen on this photograph. And the areas that I want to sharpen generally would be um, around the eyes, the eyelashes, eyebrows, the lips, um, the hair. And maybe if she has gold, like jewelry on, you know, make that stand out a little bit more. Her necklace, things like that. Um, I would soften the skin, uh, but her skin looks pretty good on this photograph. So I really don't think I have to do that. So to sharpen this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up. I have a, a, a layer named Sharpen right now. I'm going to come up to my filter. All right, I'm going to come down to Other and go to High Pass. Okay, we're going to click on High Pass. Now, I like to set this around 5.0. All right, so set your radius to 5.0 or whatever you're comfortable with or whatever you're, you uh, you like, think it should be. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Uh, then I'm going to come up and I'm going to select uh, Overlay. <coughs> we want to uh, hit uh, click on Overlay here. So we go ahead and click that to overlay. And now if you notice, as I turn this on and off, look at the photograph. Notice how much sharper that actual photograph is now. We sharpen the overall photograph. Now obviously we don't want the whole photograph to be that sharp. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come down with uh, our sharpen layer highlighted. 
we're going to come down and we're going to left click one time to create a mask all right and once that uh, layer mask is there make sure that it has the, the current highlight so we cl left click on it once then we're just going to hit control I and when we do that if you notice it changes our layer mask to black which what that does is that actually hides the effect that we just did so if you notice the sharpness has disappeared now it's still there on this on this uh, little thumbnail here but we actually overlaid it with a black mask with a mask which is covering that sharpening effect and what that does is that hides that and that allows us to paint out only those areas that we want the sharpening to take effect on and what we're going to do now is let just left click once to you know make sure that the black the 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 uh, layer mask here is, is highlighted you notice you have a white box around it um, then we're going to come over here to our paintbrush tool. All right, we're just going to left click on that so that we have it. Now, since we're going, I'm going to lower my. I don't know why I'm getting these noises, so I apologize about that. But what we're going to do now is we want to paint on top of the black layer mask. So we we don't want to paint on the black layer mask with black we want to paint with white so we make sure that our white over here is highlighted and you can s switch between those now I don't understand why this is blinking like crazy or boinking like crazy here is it something I did something uh, maybe I should have done let me see here let me go back click on this there we go. I don't know what I don't know why that was happening, but okay, I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> so we want to come back over here our black layer mask. Make sure that it has the focus, has the white box around it. Next, we want to make sure that we're painting with white. Now we can switch between these two very simply by hitting the X key on our keyboard. And when we do that, you notice it, it switches the, the foreground color from white to black and black to white every time we hit. So making sure that white is our foreground color because we're painting on a black mask with our our paintbrush then we can simply zoom into the areas we want to paint and start painting so I'm going to lower my using my left and right bracket keys once again on my keyboard I can adjust the size of my brush once that's done I can start painting in now as you can see I'm painting in these eyes but I do not want to paint in the whites of the eyes, okay? Because if there's any veins or anything like that, we don't want those to be real sharp and to come out real sharp. Uh, the next thing I could do is um, I could zoom in even closer, and you get really minute with these things, and you can start going through individually and painting the, uh, each individual eyelash. And you can see me just going ahead and painting all these little eye eyelashes in. It'll take me a moment here. Uh, like I said, this can be, you know, it can be a little time consuming. Now I can make my little brush, my brush a little bit bigger. I can just hit this black in general. Okay, just kind of speed up the process here. Uh, and then come back down to a smaller brush and hit some of these eyebrows, or I'm sorry, eyelashes again. Okay. Hey, good enough. Now we're going to come over to this one. We're going to do this one. Just going to hit some of these really fast. And I apologize, I know it's not the uh, most beautiful work here, but you know, I'm just uh, trying to get this point across to you how to do this. Um, actually, these pictures are already edited. I have the final copies, you know, saved to my drives. Uh, the young lady's got her copies. She was really, really happy with them. Um, and obviously, I took my time <laughs> on those. Alright, so once we get that done, um, then I'm going to enlarge the brush a little bit, just paint in the black. Okay. With that being done, then I can go ahead and hit the eyebrows if I'd like. And if you notice, you can see that. Then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the lips here. There we go. Looking nice. I like the jewelry to really kind of stand out a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit the jewelry. You know what? And I'm over the hair here, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to make this a larger brush. I'm just going to go ahead and paint over this hair. When I do, if you notice, you can see how the hair kind of starts standing out here. 
So we're just going to paint over that. Now we don't want to paint over the skin because we don't want the, the skin texture to come out. We want to keep that skin texture more of a soft, uh, soft texture. But as I paint over the hair, you can definitely see the hair starting to, to stand out um, as far as sharpness goes. And we're going to hit the hair with the uh, with her earrings so that we get the nice shiny effect on the earrings. And if you want, you can come in here and just kind of make it smaller and just hit these individual hairs. And then, you yeah, know, maybe real quick, I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to just hit this necklace just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Like I said, once again, I'm just doing this very, very quickly. Normally I would take a lot more time to make sure I'm a lot more precise in my aim. But this is giving you guys a general, uh, hopefully it's giving you a general idea of what I'm talking about. Alright, that being done, and I'll come down here. I'll just grab this part of the chain. And it's not like a night and day difference, but it just gives that extra little pop. Um, that just kind of sets that picture apart. Okay, so let's back on out. Let's come in a little closer. Now let's turn it on and off. So if you notice, you can see a big difference there when you turn it on and off. Now to some people that might be a little too strong, too little, too a little too powerful. Oh, and one other thing: if you're on this mask here, if you hold your your Alt key down and left click on this mask what happens is it kind of inverts it and you can actually see where you paint it so if you did miss anywhere you can kinda of take a look at that it's kind of a ch I don't know an easy cheating way to see what you hit and what you missed um, just to get it back just once again place your cursor on this uh, little black thumbnail here hold the alt key down and left click again so you can turn it on and off and I use this a lot just to see if I have missed certain things um, so once again, if this effect is a little bit too strong for you, that's fine. Once again, we come over here to our opacity. It's, comp it's uh, currently at 100%. And we can actually drop it all the way to zero, as you can see. Or we can just um, move it up to where we think it looks nice. I'm going to say maybe about 74%. So, 74% opacity here now. We're going to turn it off. And we're going to turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Off and on. looks pretty nice alright um, whoops that's pretty much it for this um, quick down and dirty look at some of the things I do like I said there's, a m there's many many other things that I'll do depending on the, the photograph um, the lighting conditions like I said this young girl she has you know very beautiful skin I really didn't have to soften that skin up at all um, like I said, I would spend more time on the hair flyaways. I would spend more time possibly, you know, with the eyes if she had um, some veins in her eyes, which hers aren't too bad. You could whiten those eyes up, remove the veins. Um, if she had her teeth showing, if they need a little bit of whitening, we could have went ahead and did that. A um, million things you could do with this, these photos. But, you know, overall, I think, you know, it's a pretty nice, pretty nice photo. I'm happy with the way I had my lighting set up things like that. Uh, I thought it turned out really nice. She was happy. I was happy. So we were all happy. So like I said, if you have any suggestions or comments, uh, questions, I can't answer everything, but I'll try. Um, go ahead and you know leave me a comment below the video and uh, I'll get some more, uh, more detailed, better videos out here. Like I said, I apologize again. This is just a really quick, down and dirty, fast one just to see if my system's running right again. Alright, till next time you guys practice. Um, have a great time and I uh, hope these uh, little tips and techniques uh, help you out. Take care. Have a good, uh, have a great day. Bye.